Kenya, you were going to take a backseat in the writing process of Blackish this season, and then Donald Trump was elected president. What changed in you, and why did you so badly want to be back to the table and part of that writing process? Why? Was well, that something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a combination of things. It was, you know, interesting. It, it was the night watching my kids, you know, watching my wife. My wife has become obsessed with politics, and I think that that is. There's a, a good, you know, some good that came out of that. But it, watching my kids break down, watching my wife just be, like, literally distraught. And then, all, interestingly enough, my writer's room. You know, coming into my writer's room and seeing, like, us not be able to do work. Mm -hmm. You know, and it went from me being with them to me being sort of angry at them. Because mm -hmm. writers as a room were just, were unbelievably liberal. You know, it's like a, such a, a one-way one swinging room that I was like, the things that you're saying to me were almost echoing the other side. And I was like, huh. there's no bridge to this conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're building up for a civil war. Like, there's no bridge to this conversation. You know, millions and millions of people felt differently. We were off in a, a lot of different ways. And so maybe we weren't listening, and maybe they're not listening, and maybe let's try to find a way. And it really, it was interesting, Chappelle, that week did, which I think is probably since prior, you know, one of the best monologues I've ever seen. On Saturday Night Live. There was a sort of shift, and it was it's so interesting to me how things break down culturally, there was a shift in the perception of how we were seeing what was going on. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, what we all were, were American, and we needed to sort of see like how we can take this gut punch and really get up and fight together. Tonight should be a pretty uneventful election night. Yeah. 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 Right. We're gonna make history tonight. Everybody go home. There's no way we're getting any work done today, so. We'll reconvene tomorrow. I can't believe this. I just read that he may not even live at the White House. What? That is a donkey punch to the back of the head. This day is a wash. We'll start fresh tomorrow. Luckily, they let me write that in a weekend and, and change the order around. And I don't know, network television never gets the ability to do that. Somehow they let us do it, and the staff and crew and, and studio and everybody let us get it out where it actually landed while it was still in the zeitgeist mm -hmm. enough, and it was one of the best writing experiences for me. Yeah, huh. I've got to say, how fast was that turn? Because, because it was, it was, I, I've it was never like, like Neil Young writing Ohio <laughs> or something. Like, like, like we wrote it in a, I wrote it in a weekend. Luckily, I had a, we didn't get notes, you know what I'm saying? We were at that point. Read it that Monday, pushed the shooting early, shot it. Our post was amazing. We did a three-day post turnaround, huh. color corrected. Like, it was, it literally happened in two weeks. I, I, I just enjoyed it so much on, like, not Thanks, only on the right. level of the statement and the discussion, but also from a producing standpoint, like, when did they mix it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, in the, the lowest, it's most crap. boring level. Yeah. 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 time. <laughs> <laughs> When in your careers have you felt pigeonholed? And with that, what are the things that you are sort of approached for as we want, we expect and want this thing from you and you are sort of tired of needing to deliver that? I had on and off, did shows on and off, but I did girlfriends in the game. And then it mm -hmm. was like, you know, other offers would come up and I was like, I just have to get off a black show. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't have to think that way. But in my mind, because I, I walked in, I remember the game had literally broken every cable record on television when it debuted, literally broken every one of them. And I walked into a staffing meeting for the next year and they were like, what show is that? And I'm like, mm. fuck you. <laughs> like there's no way any other show that did that. And then one of my best friends, a white guy who's was like, he was like, yeah, but those are all black people watching. And I was like, fuck, you, you like me, and you're saying this. <laughs> and I, but I understand. You need better friends. The, the yeah. <laughs> but I understand where his head was at and where his yeah. mind was at. And I, mm. But at the same time, I took the pigeonholing for me mm -hmm. and embraced it, you know, and felt like that was how, you know, you sort of, you can't beat him, join him, mm -hmm. was like, you know what, I am the black guy, you know, and... I'm not gonna wear a blazer today, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna sort of, cause I can't be, you know, if I'm gonna be the ver most ver honest version of who I am, I have to be the most honest version of who I am. I was told to wear a blazer. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Judd Apatow. I'm David Mandel. I'm Elizabeth Moss. I'm Kevin Bacon, Billy Bob Thornton. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter on YouTube. And sitting through the laundry detergent commercial it took to get here. Make sure to subscribe for more videos from The Hollywood Reporter right here. 